Ja, sehr verehrte Referentinnen, distinguished speakers, distinguished guests, members of the biennial board, sponsors and representatives of foundations. Ladies and gentlemen, our planet is on fire. This is a quote by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He said so uh, three years ago uh, during the uh, conflagrations in Australia in the face of ever more acute uh, climate disaster, nuclear rearmament, and a, a situation that is getting more and more tense in terms of political and economic uh, situation. This sentence I quoted at the beginning of the last biannual. Since that time, unfortunately, the problems have become even more acute and give rise to great concern. We have to talk about how to better deal with these problems which, as it looks now, are part of what we will have to experience as normal life in the coming decades. Nevertheless, I'm happy to welcome you to the 14th Swiss Biennial on Science, Techniques, and Aesthetics. Rethinking Consciousness and the Mind, which I hear was open. Some of you, as far as I know, are taking part for the first time. Permit me, therefore, to express a few ideas on the biennial as a science and culture platform. For more than 25 years, this event has taken up questions regarding the importance and the consequences of scientific research, which in the predominant uh, scientific of life uh, tend to be excluded. The biennial has its place in the educational landscape of the city and the canton of Lucerne, although it is not at all well adapted. Its role is to raise objections and to put critical questions regarding seemingly stable uh, conditions in science and society. Uh, the pre-conference dinner at Eigenthal yesterday uh, got our discussions started, uh, and today discussions will show if we can arrive at a new understanding of we mean by consciousness and the mind about what the contribution of neuroscience or physics is to this understanding. In its 400-year history, modern science has triggered several revolutions in um, the natural sciences and the life sciences. However, a revolution in the humanities, the sciences of the mind, is still outstanding. Where do consciousness and the mind come from? How do they fit into our understanding of natural life and the future of mankind. I can't promise you that these questions will be answered today, but I, what I can promise you is an inspiring day, both surprising stories told by researchers working at the periphery of scientific innovation, the nature of consciousness, the human mind, and Buddhism, as well as the economy of sustainable development. More than 220 scientists and artists have spoken at the biennial so far since its inception, among them three Nobel winners for physics, Roger Penrose, Anton Zeilinger, and Brian Josephson. 
Let me take a look back to the legendary biannual in 2001 in the Lucerne Theater. One of the strangest paradoxes uh, which takes uh, in which quantum physics takes human thinking to its limits is the teleportation of quantum states demonstrated by Austrian um, physicist Anton Zeilinger in 1997. The scientific and epistemological context of these exciting experiments provide the basis for the phenomenon of quantum entanglement and non-locality. Ninety years ago, in the so-called Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen thought experiment, the very basis was created for that. Albert Einstein spoke of a spooky action at a distance, which to this very day takes us to the limits of our knowledge and understanding. Quantum processes may play a role in the emergence of a consciousness. This is a dispute which is going on in the Anglo-Saxon area, has been going on for decades. Um, at Lucerne, Roger Penrose and Anton Zeilinger engaged in a controversial discussion which is still of great interest today in epistemological terms. These discussions are still very much up to date. They give us an insight into mind expand in, into the effect of mind expanding substances such as ayahuasca a hallucinogenic preparation from the Amazon basin. I'd also like to mention Brian Johnson, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1973. In 2007, in his opening statement, he compared quantum mechanics with a walking tool. The language and description of reality of which is subject to major limitations, he said. Josephson referred to the code of music, that's what he called it, the code of music which displays forces that are completely unknown to science. The code, he says, is a way of escaping the trap of scientific descriptions. I like this comparison between the reality descriptions of quantum physics and music very much because it's our experience that science relies strongly on the categories of observability and measurability of phenomena, while music has the capacity to open doors to an extraordinary and enchanting reality of sound as we're going to experience later today. But back to the biennial. Uh, you will be given brief introduction into the subjects to be dealt with by the speakers at the beginning of the presentations. Some of the presentations will be delivered via Zoom as in previous year. Three out of nine speakers will talk to us from overseas. The others have come by train from Germany and Switzerland. I'm underlining this because we are making a contribution to climate protection, which matters to us. Um, during the corona pandemic, um, People were saying that video conferences would be the standard of the future and we would fly less. But now, despite the energy crisis, uh, we've forgotten all those good intentions and flying, traveling by plane has again become part of the corporate reality. In conclusion, I'd like to thank our sponsors, in particular the Georg und Bertha Schweizer Wienicke Foundation, as well as other foundations, donors, and companies that have been supporting us for years, particularly during uh, the difficult years in the recent past. They have saved us 
and they have made our work possible. They have enabled us to continue maintaining global contacts in order to discuss highly topical research issues in Lucerne. The interdisciplinary dialogue has always been at the center of our work, as well as new approaches to knowledge. And I'd like to thank our esteemed partners most cordially for supporting this approach. Without them, the biennial would not be possible. So all that remains for me to do is to wish you a day of outstanding intellectual experiences and many inspiring conversations.